Hello everyone and welcome back again to my channel. My name is Roslyn. I'm a clinical nurse and in today's video I'm going to present a topic on cachexia. Cachexia is a common condition and it's a condition that causes extreme weight loss and muscle wasting. It is a symptom of many chronic conditions like cancer, chronic renal failure, HIV and multiple sclerosis. Cachexia predominantly affects people in the late stages of serious diseases like cancer, HIV or AIDS, and con congestive heart failure. Cachexia is defined as a multifactorial syndrome characterized by an ongoing loss of skeletal muscle mass with or without loss of fat mass that cannot be fully reversed by conventional nutritional support and leads to progressive functional impairment. The disease causes involuntary weight loss, muscle wasting, and often a decrease in body fat. The loss of skeletal muscle may lead to physical weakness and impairment. Causes of cachexia. Cachexia is a complex syndrome. Its exact causes may vary depending on a person's physiology and the underlying illness associated with it. However, some underlying factors remain uh, consistent across different diagnoses. And these factors include increased metabolic rate and energy expenditure, reduced nutrient intake or availability, increased breakdown of muscle, prevention of muscle growth, among others. So risk factors of cachexia. Cachexia often occurs at the end stages of severe conditions like I mentioned in the beginning. And a person with one of the following conditions should talk to their doctor about steps to take to prevent the development of cachexia and how it may be managed if it develops. These conditions include cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that is COPD, chronic renal failure, congestive heart failure, Crohn's disease, cystic fibrosis, HIV and AIDS, rheumatoid arthritis, Symptoms of cachexia include involuntary weight loss, whereby a person may lose weight despite getting adequate nutrition or a high number of calories. Muscle wasting, uh, in this case, this is a characteristic symptom of the cachexia. However, despite the ongoing loss of the muscle, not all people with cachexia appear malnourished. For example, a person who was overweight before developing cachexia may appear to be of average size despite having lost a significant amount of weight. Loss of appetite is another symptom, which is also called anorexia. A person with cachexia may lose their desire to eat any food at all. Reduced functional ability is another symptom. And in this case, a person may experience symptoms of malaise, fatigue, and low energy. This may include generalized feelings of discomfort, extreme tiredness, or a lack of motivation. Swelling or edema is another symptom. This happens because of low protein levels in the blood, which may cause fluid to move into the tissue, causing swelling. And as cachexia is sometimes difficult to recognize, doctors use a variety of criteria for diagnosis. In the most common system, the person must meet two criteria. One is non-deliberately, losing more than 5% body weight over 6 to 12 months. The other is a body mass index, that is a BMI of less than 20 in a person under 65 years old, or a BMI of less than 22 in a person over 65 years old. Complications of cachexia. The fat and muscle wasting in cachexia is serious and can potentially increase morbidity. Cachexia is a significant factor in around one-fifth cases of deaths due to cancer. So complications of cachexia include diminished quality of life and loss of the ability to live independently, impaired response to treatments, reduced immunity, escalating symptoms of the underlying chronic condition, reduced life expectancy from the underlying disease. Treatment include treatment of cachexia will often depend on its associated underlying condition since many factors contribute to its cause. 
A person will most likely have a medical plan incorporating several types of therapy to treat the disease. And due to the complex of the nature of the cachexia, simply increasing calorie consumption will often not be enough to stop weight loss and muscle degradation. Medical professionals pay greater consideration to behavioral and psychological factors when assessing cachexia and its treatment. So some recommended steps to support a person with cachexia include focusing on the social aspects of eating. People get pleasure from sitting together over a meal even when they are not in the mood of eating. Emphasizing the social importance of eating instead of the amount of food may help a person reposition their emotional and psychological relationship to eating. Eating frequent small meals, people will Cachexia are more likely to tolerate eating high calorie meals in small portions throughout the day rather than three set meals. In addition, a nutritional supplement drinks are available to increase calorie intake between the small meals. Providing emotional support is important, especially from the family. And the family of a person with cachexia should understand that as an underlying disease progresses to its end stage, people will sometimes not want to eat once they reach this stage. So friends and family should not force the person with cachexia to eat because muscle wasting and the weight loss will continue whether a person with the condition eats or not. Using appetite stimulants is another treatment for cachexia with medications that are well prescribed by the health professional. However, eating more will not stop the progression, the symptoms of cachexia or improve muscle wasting. An increased appetite may help a person participate in family and social meals and feel a little less isolated, which benefits mental health. Encouraging light exercises. As long as the person can tolerate it, exercise might help build mus muscle mass. However, there is no evidence about the effectiveness of exercise as a measure against cachexia. Prevention. Cachexia is usually a side effect of an underlying medical condition, so the focus for prevention lies in keeping the underlying chronic condition at key. Some conditions such as COPD or HIV are potentially preventable. However, other conditions that cause cachexia are largely unavoidable, such as cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, and Crohn's disease. So in summary, cachexia is an often irreversible condition that occurs during the late stages of serious illnesses, including cancer and HIV. It causes severe involuntary weight loss and muscle wastage. And an approach to the treatment of cachexia incorporates a range of therapies that can help. However, the best way to prevent cachexia is to reduce the risk of underlying conditions. Thanks for staying tuned. See you in the next one.